It is the best selling board game of all time. A game night staple that turns dog eat dog capitalism into family fun. And now PBS's American Experience series, Ruthless Monopoly Secret History, is sharing some of the little known facts about the franchise. Yes, do not pass go, do not collect $200. Just listen up as the show's director gives Hattie Dijamal the details. The love, the laughter, the competition. Monopoly has sold more than 275 million copies since 1935. Talk about making bank. And all these years later, we're still hooked. It's this deep nostalgia. It's something that we love to play as kids. It's one of the most satisfying things about growing up. Stephen Ives, director of Ruthless, Monopoly's secret history on PBS's American Experience, shares some surprises about the game celebrating capitalism. Starting with the fact it was invented by a socialist woman as the landlord's game. Lizzie McGee was a renaissance woman who wanted to expose the downside of capitalism. She's an engineer, she's a poet, she's a writer, she's an activist. She created the landlord's game, but instead of her critique of capitalism, it became a celebration of it. And in the years that followed, no one really owned Monopoly. It became what's known as a folk game, and everyone made it their own. They'd have fun redoing their own boards and putting their own street names on it, no matter where they were, in Indianapolis or Boston or Philadelphia. Our next Monopoly secret? the modernization of the beloved game by well-meaning Quakers and a shady opportunist. In the late 1920s, the Quakers in Atlantic City were playing the folk game. So they put Atlantic City properties onto the game board. From Marvin Gardens to Boardwalk, the name stuck. And then a down-on-his-luck friend of the Quakers, Charles Darrow, enters the picture and starts marketing the game as his own creation. He was the one that found an artist and added the kind of graphic look to the game that is such an iconic part of what we think of as Monopoly. Even though Darrow was a fraud and a bit of a charlatan, he is responsible in a way for Monopoly existing the way it does because he's the guy that figured out how to get people to buy it. We'll jump another four decades to the 70s, where San Francisco State professor Ralph Onsbach battled Parker Brothers and their Monopoly on Monopoly with his own version of the game. He decides that monopolies are bad for America, and he comes up with a game called Anti-Monopoly. Parker Brothers accused him of infringing on their intellectual property, and then came the legal battle. They tried to monopolize the game of Monopoly. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. And he takes it all the way to the Supreme Court of the United States. And in that struggle, he uncovers the secret history of Monopoly that had been buried for almost 70 years. From countercultural roots to celebration of capitalism, that's Monopoly Secrets.